Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. Last Friday of the year, it's December 30th. We went to get tacos between newscasts, and it's cooler than it looks out there, folks. Yeah, it, it, it is. I mean, 58 degrees, but it's still not as cold as it was a week ago. Right, and I think we're going to need your microphone on at some point. It sounds like it's off oh. right now, but we'll go to Justin now. He'll it save fell. us. <laughs> it, oh, it did fall. Yeah, oh, okay. It happens. All right. It we put out an APB for Stephanie's microphone. Oh, we'll fix microphone. that coming up. Okay. Justin, help. Uh, yes, I'm here. I'm here. By the way, I, you offered me a taco. I said no, and now I'm regretting it based on the reviews that uh, you just gave from the tacos. Anyway, uh, right now we're sitting at uh, 58 degrees here in San Antonio. Actually, 61. We just jumped up. 57 Pleasanton, 60 down there in Catula, 64 New Braunfels, 48 in Kerrville, 54 Rock Springs. Cool morning, but a nice morning. We had lower humidity move in overnight. Uh, you remember yesterday morning was pretty humid. Here's a look at the forecast. Uh, we've got mostly cloudy, a few sprinkles today, 71. Saturday and Sunday, New Year's Eve, put a little firework there for you, 76 degrees. Beautiful tomorrow, 77 on New Year's Day. A little more humidity, but still nice. The weekend all in all looks great. And as we look at the pollen count, this is important. Mount Cedar came in high this morning, up to 4,000 now, 4,830, highest it's been. Uh, we've had molds uh, drop to the low category 350. So it is a mountain cedar alert day for those who are bothered by it, and that's most of us. Radar check, few sprinkles today. That's coming up. We'll take a look at the radar. Drought update, we've got the last drought monitor of 2022 to show you. And what about those New Year's Eve plans? Well, we already touched on it a little bit, but we'll have an update on the clouds and the temperatures and what you can expect if you're headed downtown or wherever you're headed for your new... New Year's Eve. We've got more on that coming up in just a bit. Let's go over to Stephen now for the latest on what's going on on the roads. Good morning, sir. Hey, good morning, Justin. And you know what? Keeping the taco theme alive. If you're off to go get your breakfast taco, then uh, great news is you're really not going to see any uh, any slowdown. The morning has been pretty quiet, and that has really been also the theme throughout the week. We know it's uh, pretty much the last stretch of the year or we're at the end of the year. But of course, we also know we're at the end of the holidays where we're going to see this type of traffic that's going to continue at least up until next week. Things will get back to normal. So if you like to take advantage of those empty roadways right now. Uh, 35 southbound here at FM 22. This has really been uh, FM 22 52. Pardon me. This has really been the problem throughout the morning. We did have a spill that was reported there earlier where that left that exit closed. Now the good news is at first responders look like they could be clearing up, but uh, no slowdown has been picked up along those southbound lanes, which is great news to report again. Any ordinary day, we'd likely see some red out there, uh, but we've really been seeing green all week long, so that's great, meaning the roads are quiet, but we know that there's still going to be Plenty of road closures that are going to be taking place, especially into the early days of 2023. Let's go ahead and bring up that QR code. You can scan that QR code that will get you to our KSAT traffic page and you will be updated on all the current closures that are taking place right now and the closures that will take place into the new year. Happy New Year, Mark. Same to you, Stephen. And Stephen, Happy New Year to you. Let's look at today's 9 at 9. Flights with Southwest Airlines are returning to a normal schedule today after eight days of a chaotic holiday travel mess. Despite the much welcome relief, the damage is done. The Transportation Department is warning Southwest again that the airline could face consequences for the meltdown if it fails to make things right for the thousands of stranded passengers. After the major winter storm that hit the East Coast, residents there are now bracing for the threat of dangerous flooding from rising temperatures and melting snow. Officials are clearing storm drains in anticipation of flooding, and the state of New York is on standby with around 800,000 sandbags. Soccer legend Pele has passed away at the age of 82. Hospital officials say he died due to multiple organ failure caused by colon cancer. Pele is widely considered to be one of the greatest soccer players in history, winning three World Cups. British fashion designer Vivian Westwood also passed away yesterday at the age of 81. The style icon died surrounded by family at her home in London. Westwood was known as the High Priestess of Punk and the Queen of Extreme. She started making clothing for herself as a teenager. The mastermind behind 2019's college admissions scam will be sentenced next week. Rick Singer will find out how much time he will spend behind bars on January 4th. Prosecutors say Singer was the architect in a pay-to-play scheme for wealthy parents who wanted to get their teens into top universities. Prosecutors want Singer to serve six years in prison and pay over $19 million in fines and asset forfeitures. 
House Republicans fighting over the Speaker's position could have an unintended victim, their staff. If the Speaker isn't decided by January 13th, House committee staffers face the prospects of receiving no pay. A House rules package puts payroll on hold until a new Speaker is confirmed. Kevin McCarthy is still working to lock down the 218 votes he will need to claim the Speaker's gavel. Mortgage rates are up for the first time in six weeks. Freddie Mac's latest data shows the average rate for a 30-year fixed rate mortgage at 6.42%, up 0.15 from a week ago. Before this latest report, the rate had fallen for six consecutive weeks. For the first time in 40 years, wage inequality is falling. The Wall Street Journal reports since the pandemic, hourly wages of lower paid, less skilled employees are gaining ground from those of skilled workers, college grads and professionals. The trend is partly caused by the pandemic by shrinking the supply of people willing to do low paid in-person work by making it riskier and more stressful. It's been forcing employers to pay those workers more. U.S. jobless claims rose a bit last week, staying near pre-pandemic levels. It suggests the labor market remains historically tight. The government reports initial filings rose by 9,000 to 225,000. The four-week average edging down 250 to 221,000. Claims remain at amounts indicating many employers are still holding on to their workers. And that's today's Nine at Nine. The CEO of Southwest Airlines talking on Good Morning America this morning in a first TV interview about the chaotic holiday travel mess that Southwest customers have had to deal with for the last about 10 days. Bob Jordan says today they are off to a great start as Southwest resumes its normal schedule. So he also went on to apologize to customers and employees affected by the whole mess. Jordan said most of the cancellations were due to extreme cold weather but did not say anything about technology, technology issues. Interesting. Now that services with Southwest seem to be getting back to normal, Jordan says their focus is now is taking care of customers, offering refunds, and yes, covering expenses. Uh, we'll be looking at and taking care of things like uh, rental cars, hotel rooms, meals, booking uh, customers on other airlines. Uh, so the, that will all be part of what we're covering here as we reimburse our customers and make good on this issue. I want to be really frank. I mean, th this has impacted so many people, so many customers uh, over the holidays. It's impacted our employees and I'm extremely sorry for that. Uh, there's just no way almost to apologize enough because we love our customers, we love our people, and we really impacted their plans. And when asked about accountability and calls for a resignation, Jordan only responded by saying their focus right now is getting operations back on track and getting refunds to customers. He said there will be a lot of lessons learned that come out of this event. In your other morning headlines, Donald Trump's tax returns are now officially public record. And desperate times create desperate measures. More heroic stories coming out of the winter storm up in Buffalo. Plus, a blizzard break-in and a barber pole was more of a sign of warmth than a sign of getting a good haircut. David Sears is here with all of these stories. The stories from Buffalo just keep coming, and they're all great stories. So it's, uh, it's fun to watch how these people just respond and help everybody else around them. Double check your mic. Just be safe. Um, well, I, I hear. I know it didn't right fall now. out like mine. Because <laughs> <Yours>, I <laughs> can see it. Yours is still attached to your so tie. I to repeat myself. Uh, so probably. all these great stories keep there coming out of Buffalo. Yes. And it's amazing to watch people help people in yeah. these in these desperate times. So we'll have those for you just a second. But first, let's start with this. The wait's pretty much over for the release of former President Donald Trump's taxes. The release covers the last six years. We are looking for some new numbers. A couple of weeks ago, some numbers were revealed. Like in 2015, he claimed a loss of 31 million and reported 641,000 in tax payments. In 2016, he lost 32 million, paid 750 bucks. The Democrats in Washington have been after Trump's taxes since he announced his run for president. The House Ways and Means Committee has had their returns for some time, but they are just now being revealed. Republicans argued the record should be kept private. Another tough situation because of the weather, a serious medical issue. Patrick Holland was ready to receive a new heart with a transplant. Patrick was in Anchorage, Alaska. The heart was in Seattle. Therein lies the problem. He got the call last Thursday that there was a heart for him and he had eight hours to get to Seattle, but there was a huge storm. And when he got to the airport, you got it. His flight was canceled and then things just snowballed from there. But I realized in Anchorage at the time, there was also a storm going on. I mean, it was crazy to watch it from out the windows. And then the second flight got canceled and then the third flight got canceled. And then I knew 
at this point I knew, I told my brother, I said, the next phone call is not going to be good. And uh, just as I was calling her, she was calling me back to tell me that they were going to give the heart to somebody else. Yeah, Patrick is solace knowing someone else got that heart and a chance to live. After spending Christmas with his family, he is headed to Seattle where he will stay so he doesn't miss out on another heart transplant. The guy right there is Jay Withy. He just broke into a school, but he was not trying to steal anything. He was trying to stay alive. Jay was one of many stranded in that deadly snowstorm back in Buffalo last week. At first, he was just trying to stay alive in his truck. He ended up letting a couple of other people join him. Eventually, he ran out of gas and he knew he had to do something, so he broke into the school. He went back out into the storm, found more stranded people, mostly elderly, stuck in their vehicles trying to stay alive. He got them into the school. They set up some tables, found some apples and some cereal. They even found a TV to watch the Buffalo Bills play. More importantly, 24 people found each other and they found a way to survive. And without Jay breaking in at school, as much bad as it sounds, but he saved us. I've never been much of a, of a, you know, the type of person that everything happens for a reason, but uh, I'm definitely a believer now. This is a bond. We're all survivors. Yeah, when it was safe to leave, Jay left a note explaining what he did. He apologized for breaking in, but explained how he was stranded and ran out of gas and then found other stranded people. They needed a warmth place to stay and a bathroom even ended up with Merry Christmas at the end of that note. By the way, before he left, the folks put all the tables and chairs back and left the school just the way they found it. All right, these store stories just keep coming. This time it is Craig Elston. He owns a barber shop in Buffalo. While folks all around him lost electricity, his shop managed to stay powered up. So he got on social media, told people to come by and get warm. Charge your phone, call some folks that you need to call, and his generosity saved lives. And when that guy um, knocked on the door, I realized like his hands was almost frozen, his face was like almost frozen, and it was like extremely, extremely excruciating cold. At that time, that's when I realized how cold he was, and he said, if I'd have been out there two more minutes, I would have died. I know we went through that storm back in 2021, but this is just, we have a fraction of an idea what these people were going through in Buffalo. Craig was able to give those folks some socks and some t-shirts. They rested in barber chairs, even on the floor. They used those barber capes for blankets. Craig said at one point he had about 40 people inside his shop trying to stay warm and alive. He also said he wouldn't hesitate to do it all over again. Hopefully he won't have to. Hopefully we don't see that again, but uh, I bet uh, he's got some new customers coming in to get a little, I think little so. shave and cut. Especially now that the story is getting more publicity, because yeah. in the end, we're all human and yeah. kindness rules. Yes, Amazing. Does. Yep. Absolutely great stories. Thank you, David. Thanks, right. David. 9 11, 60 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. We are taking a look back at some of the wildest viral and trending stories for 2022. Some will make you say yuck, <laughs> some will make you say aw, and some will make you say wow. Plus, if you're looking to start fresh in the new year, your health should be a top priority. What you should have on your end of year health checklist after the break. Just about 915. Welcome back as we count down the days to the new year. Right now is a great time to make your health a priority. Camelia Wada shares what to put on your year end health checklist. Before you ring in 2023, set yourself up for success in the new year by focusing on your health now. Instead of one huge change, start with the basics. January 17th is the average day that the American breaks their New Year's resolutions. So make small steps, make small changes that are sustainable. Dr. Stephen Kopensky with Mayo Clinic says next on your year-end health checklist should be to schedule wellness visits with your primary care provider. Check on your blood pressure, cholesterol, and if at risk, get diabetes screening. Routine screenings for cancers are also key to maintaining good health. And arm yourself with knowledge by making your health a part-time job. Get a blood pressure cuff at home. You have it linked to your iPhone or your smartphone so it'll uh, record the pressures. Uh, know your medicines. Keep a list on your smartphone. Know what they are, why you take them, what their what the side effects are. Kopensky says to pick a day or week to focus on a healthy habit so it's not overwhelming. What's important? How what you eat. Next is how much activity you have, physical activity. 
Next is your sleep. That's one of the forgotten risk factors. And finally, get vaccinated. It's not too late to get a flu shot or an updated COVID-19 booster if you're eligible. Kopetsky says this can actually reduce your risk of cardiovascular problems. When we get the flu or we get COVID, we get a lot of inflammation in our body. And that then leads to problems with the lining of our arteries, where they start to block up and have blood clots, which can lead to a heart attack or a stroke. Dr. Kopecki says having a daily goal can help you focus and achieve health improvements. For example, set a goal of being active one day, the next focus on eating more fruits and veggies, then try cutting back on alcohol or getting better sleep. He says small changes can add up to big improvements. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Well, Camille, we'd love to take that advice um, regarding the sleep. <laughs> it doesn't always work on this shift. Good luck to us. <laughs> Outside with live cam, so clouds are around. It felt cooler than uh, about 61 degrees here in the downtown area yeah. in the last hour or so. You, you borrowed one of my jackets. Yes, yes. going out into the parking lot, mm -hmm. but I'm, you know, but it's not, not as bad as last week. That's true. Not cold, just mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. And we've got the clouds. It looks like they may try to produce some rain, but I, I doubt it. We're not going to get much today. If we see anything, it's going to be sprinkles. Mm -hmm. uh, just blown out up to a whole lot. And so that doesn't help us with our drought situation. Let me show you the drought monitor. The last one we'll see here in 2022. And I think what is most striking about this is that San Antonio is right in the bullseye, the hardest hit place in the state when it comes to lack of rainfall. It is right here, north of San Antonio, northern Bear County, Bernie Comfort, Canyon Lake, Blanco, where the drought has been at its worst. And that is where we have the exceptional drought. San Antonio, most of San Antonio sits within the extreme drought. And then you have severe, moderate. Uh, you know, bottom line, all these colors, um, just uh, let us know that we did not get much rain this year. And it, it was tough, especially for farmers out in Medina County. It's just been a tough year. This is the latest on Medina Lake, 6.4% full. It's down 80 feet. It, uh, it's still dropping a little bit, but slowly. And probably will continue to do so unless we can get a really significant rainfall in here. And that is not in the cards. We see in the radar that there is some light returns out near Rock Springs and Del Rio few light returns down towards Pleasanton and Forestville, but most of this is not even reaching the ground. If it does, again, it'll be in the form of a few sprinkles. There could be a, a light shower too out across the hill country, and I can't rule out a few raindrops here in San Antonio. Uh, but one thing you'll notice is that yesterday, you remember it was really humid. Humidity has dropped off again, so we've gone back and forth here with the humidity. Now it's falling off behind a, a dry line and we'll have dew point numbers much, much lower today. So it will not feel as humid. And that's one of the reason that reasons that that rain is not making it to the ground. Very dry at the surface. It evaporates before it gets here. Let's go outside for you and you can see the cloudy sky. 61 degrees. Dew point is down to 39. North northwesterly winds are light. And as we look at the forecast temperatures for today, by noontime, we're in the 60s, and by this afternoon, we should warm to about 71 or so. You see the cloud cover, though, remains. We may see a break or two like yesterday, but not a lot. And so that'll keep temperatures in check. Uh, 60s in the hill country, 63 for high in Bernie, 68 Canyon Lake, a little bit warmer down to the south, 73 in Pleasanton this afternoon. There's the cloud cover as it stands right now, and it's, it's widespread. 59 Kennedy, 57 in Hondo, still in the 40s in Kerrville and Fredericksburg, 49 degrees right now in Kerrville, and then you're right around 60 here in San Antonio. And looking at the dew points down in the 30s and 40s, we mentioned that dry air, that dry line is pushed off to the east now, that's sweeping all the moisture off to the east and all the rainfall, the good rainfall, off to the east. And uh, you see it here, New Orleans up to Memphis, good area of showers and storms and yeah this looks like we're getting a lot of shower activity across west texas but as i said much of this not reaching the ground this is underneath a trough of low pressure which will move east as we get into tomorrow and by the weekend we'll be looking at some great weather saturday and sunday look nice and then our next storm system starts to move in from the west this is sunday at five o'clock that's when we'll start to see some moisture getting pulled up out ahead of it so sunday afternoon will be a little more humid and then as the storm system arrives on Monday, we'll have a chance for some showers and, and maybe a storm as the front moves through. But again, this is not great odds for us. Most of the action is going to be well to our north snow for Denver once again. And then some showers and storms, Dallas up to Wichita. And then that will all sweep east late Monday into Tuesday. How about the New Year's Eve forecast? 
Well, uh, looks good. Really good, actually. 66 degrees at 8 o'clock tomorrow night, 62 at 10 p.m. And once we ring in the new year at midnight, right around 57, mostly clear. Really can't ask for better weather. Uh, so we talked about the weekend, 79 Monday with that 20% chance of rain. And then next week looks pretty nice, too. 73 Tuesday. We may dip a little bit Wednesday into Thursday, maybe back into the 60s on Thursday. But a lot of people are going to be out and about this weekend, and it uh, it's going to be awesome. Yay! Not be cold. Safe. Yes. Not cold. No. And you know, New Year's Eve, we've had a variety of weather over the mm -hmm. years. This is this is one of the good forecasts. I wish we could have had the tricentennial this year. <laughs> I know, right? Oh my how gosh. cold it was. <laughs> Flashbacks. Ooh, yeah, oh, it was cold. Okay, 921. <laughs> New Year's Eve is tomorrow, and we are looking back at some of the top entertainment headlines from this year. We have a recap of the top stories after the break. All right, we're looking back at 2022, and the entertainment headlines this year were certainly unpredictable. Uh, who could forget uh, Will Smith slapping Chris Rock? Yeah, that was big news. Also, Chris Rock talking about the slap on mm -hmm. stage at the Majestic here in San Antonio this fall. Yeah, that was huge as well. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, I won't forget Harry Styles, and he was in everything. Right. He was all over the radio, all over TV. Val Kilmer's return as Iceman yeah. and Top Gun Maverick. That was cool. We both saw it, but what mm -hmm. was cool about, or interesting about that movie, we waited for ever we did for it to actually be on the big screen and then it happened finally mm -hmm. in yes, 2022 <laughs> well abc's jason nathanson recaps all the top stories coming out of hollywood this year a couple of things nobody had on their 2022 bingo card at the beginning of the year that will smith would slap chris rock on stage at the oscars and kanye west would declare his love for hitler but both happened during this crazy year Smith slapped Rock after Rock made a joke about Smith's wife, Jada Pinkett Smith, and her close-cropped hair, the result of a disease called alopecia. Rock apparently didn't know about the condition. An enraged Smith marched on stage and smacked Rock in the face, earning him a 10-year ban from the award show. He also resigned as a member of the Academy. Kanye West is the celebrity who possibly most went off the rails in 2022. Ye, who has been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, frequently spewed conspiracy theories and anti-Semitic beliefs, which led a Adidas and the Gap to cut ties with the rapper. And the allegations were Johnny Depp and ex-wife Amber Heard's libel trials were must-see TV, bringing outrageous revelations of messy sheets and domestic she abuse. The jury up. awarding Depp more than ten million dollars in damages, but also giving Heard two million. After threats of appeals, they've since settled. Harvey Weinstein, also back on trial in 2022, convicted once again of rape and other sexual assault counts in Los Angeles. The former movie mogul facing more decades in prison on top of the 23-year sentence he's currently serving in New York. It's one of life's mysteries, sir. The box office tried to rebound from the pandemic in 2022, but it couldn't fully recover. Top Gun Maverick, one of the few movies to take off. To date, only it. Jurassic World Dominion and Avatar The Way of Water have earned a billion dollars worldwide compared to nine films that earned a billion in 2019. Coda. <laughs> At the Oscars, Coda made history. The first film featuring a mostly deaf cast to win Best Picture and the first film from a streaming service, Apple, to win Best Picture. Apple TV Plus also winning Best Comedy at the Emmys again for Ted Lasso. HBO scoring a bunch of Emmys for The White Lotus and Best Drama winner, Succession. Taylor Swift once again dominated the music world, dropping her 10th studio album, Midnight's, which became the biggest selling album in years. Swift also made history with the songs from Midnight's occupying spots 1 through 10 on the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart. First time that's ever happened. Nice. Bad Bunny also had a huge year. His album, Un Verano Sin Ti, was Apple Music and Spotify's most streamed of the year globally. And the first Spanish language album nominated for Album of the Year at the Grammys. And that was ABC's Jason Nathanson reporting. So I saw Chris Rock on stage here in San Antonio, and he was talking about the Will Smith slap. And, mm -hmm. and he's like, people come up to me all the time, and they say, did it hurt? He's like, yeah, it hurt. <laughs> the guy like played it. Muhammad Ali in the movies. Did you forget that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it looked like it hurt. Poor Chris. Ouch. Oh boy. Yeah. So he's, um, he's capitalizing on it. Let's just say that. Yeah, it was a good sure. show. It was a really good show. <laughs> 928, 61 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, including some of the wildest viral stories and trends from 2022. You just have to see it to believe it. Plus, a look at your morning sports. David's back. Talk with us about the Longhorns losing, but the Cowboys and the Spurs winning.
Let's look out there with live cam. A little chilly, but 61 degrees, not too bad. I mean, maybe a light sweater or something if you're headed out for a while. Sure, why not? Light sweater sounds good. Uh, cloudy skies. It is, uh, it's a nice morning, really. A little different from yesterday, though. Of course, we had all the humidity yesterday. Today, a little less humidity, but still the cloud cover is here, and it's it's going to be a nice day. Temperatures will eventually make their way up towards 70. There was just enough sun this morning where the sunrise was really pretty. Uh, this was sent in by one of our uh, KSAC Connect viewers, and that's the sunrise near the Medical Center. I love that. The, the sky was a really pretty color for a while this morning with some of those high clouds that we have over top of us. Uh, we should get a pretty good sunset tonight, too, if you want to check that out, and you can always send that into our KSAC Connect via the uh, KSAT weather app. Easy way to do that there. There's a there's a, a button there right at the bottom and you can send in your pictures. Here's the radar and satellite picture and you see we've got plenty of clouds and uh, these will continue throughout the day. Also a few light returns showing up on radar, but this is all really light stuff that probably isn't even reaching the ground. Just a few sprinkles here and there. Uh, so there is the opportunity for that today, but don't expect to pick up much rain at all. Probably won't even be measurable. We showed you this last half hour, but it's worth showing again. Mount Cedar is in the high category today. If you missed this, 4,830 jumped up big time today. Your forecast, 70 by 2 p.m., 71 your high temperature. There is that small chance of a shower or a sprinkle. And then by tomorrow, things clear out. And we've got a good-looking weekend headed our way. Guys. Thank you, Justin. All right, let's talk about sports. Three of my favorite teams played yesterday. Mm -hmm. Two of them won. Can you guess which ones did it win? <laughs> it's kind win? of a tall order for all three, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess it's a little much to hope for. But yeah, yeah the Longhorns lost to the uh, Huskies. And, you know, it's not pretty. Not pretty. But the Cowboys and the Spurs both got wins last night. It was a very sport busy sports evening. David Sears is here standing by right now. Actually sitting, sitting down. Sitting I by. Them, I, I told you guys I was going to be tired. You are. You're yeah. I'm worn out. I, yeah. It was. It was. A, Do you want to just stay there? I might just sit for this whole thing <laughs> because okay. I'm worn out. Can y'all? Uh, it was weird last night because the NFL the Cowboys were. Look, on they're prime. coming to you. <laughs> they're coming to you like the Cowboys were on Prime, and so you got to like switch your TV uh -huh. all around. Yeah. And then ESPN and who had uh, ESPN had had the Longhorns, and mm -hmm. then and then uh, I don't I don't remember what station the, the Spurs let's, were let's on. But man, I was like, let's let's yeah. Come over here. Misery loves company. Talk. Yeah. Okay. First, let's yeah. talk about the the, the the yeah. I don't want to talk mm -hmm. about the Longhorns. Well, we're going to talk about the Longhorns. Okay. Right? I'm sorry. <laughs> all right. You know, did you know Tech won the other night? Yes, I do. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Right, so, was, we didn't talk about I it. I was happy so, for you. So thank you. So well, I was sad for you last night. Oh, but that, well, I, 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 I didn't get to see every play because I was switching the back. But but the hey, our resolution is to stand back up at some point. We will. Yeah. yeah. No, I, In 2023. I think this is kind of cool. Yes. Yeah. Like story time. <laughs> <laughs> is. So let's let's talk Longhorns last mm. night taking on the uh, Washington Huskies and they lost in the Alamo Bowl 27-20. You know, Texas could never really get anything going like they couldn't get any momentum yeah. going. And, yeah, uh, I saw that. No, B. John Robinson. He was standing on the side. It was nice of him to show up, but he yeah. didn't want to be in the uniform. I'm, I'm a little upset something. with B. John. <laughs> How many? 51 rush yards last 51, night? 51. That was it. A That's lot. That's all they had. Yeah. And uh, I mean, John a lot suits less. Up, they probably win. You know what yeah. it was for Washington? The helmets. The shiny, the shiny helmet. I was looking at that. They were too distracting for the Longhorns. I want to file a complaint. If you if you look at those helmets, so I mean the reflection, you could see the field. You could I see know. their faces in their helmets. They were I'm, pretty cool. I'm surprised you noticed. So no, I, yeah. I noticed. Well, yeah. I, you know, every now and then I notice what what people are wearing. Not as much as you do, but I, I, I do. <laughs> Quinn Ewers, 369 yards mm. passing, but they only had 51 yards rushing. So yeah, and that was like the play of the night. For the yeah, Longhorns that was right nice. There, so. They finished the season eight and five. Sark's second season, so you know that's respectable. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens next year because you know they're talking about going to the SEC. Hey, Justin, how you doing? Yeah. Uh, are you as tired as I am? Of course I am. <laughs> of course you of course are. I am. But yours is for other reasons. You got to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, all right. So so let's let's talk Cowboys. They were on okay. Prime. So okay. this is like this is like a mess last night trying to yeah, follow all these games. Yeah, it's a streaming mess. And we there goes back and forth. Uh, Elliot right there. He scored. Cowboys. Dak Prescott. Two interceptions and a fumble. Hmm. Does that sound like a team that's ready for the playoffs? No, well, I mean, it definitely is pause mm, or mm, cause mm. for concern. Yeah, I did like yeah. the all-white unis. What do you think, Steph? Yeah, I was about it. I yeah. think it brought them good luck. You that's know, they're sweet. kind of like the heroes, you know. If you noticed, Mike McCarthy, did you? Uh, I don't know if we'll have a shot of him or not, but he had on a jacket and it had on one of the Cowboys' old logos because uh -huh. oh. it was the cowboy on the horse. It was like a cartoon. Okay. And then, But they had the star on the helmet. Yeah, but that was one of their logos. That yeah, they had. so it was pretty. It was pretty cool. Who thinks watching this game more closely, us or Sean Payton? 
Mm. That's a good question. There's one. That, now, that one doesn't count. I don't like that when they count that as an interception. You don't like that one. Well, because the <laughs> receiver had it in his hands and he lost it and the guy picked yeah. it off. So, that, you know, that shouldn't count. That, that was a nice one. That was a nice play. Yeah. I mean, they won. Yeah. And as Dak said after the game, a win's a win. We'll take it. Mm-hmm. I mean, they had a short week. They were on the road. Blah, 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 blah. But, I, you know, they just they got to get better if they're, as they head into the playoffs. Because your little computer thing that you said the other day was 49ers and Cowboys in the end. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure that's going to What was happen. that called, Mark? Uh, simulation. A, a weird simulation. Yeah, a oh, weird yeah, simulation. yeah. Yeah, that's right. All right. So let's get to the, uh, let's get to the Spurs. Woo-hoo! They actually were the first ones to play last night. They tipped off at like 7 o'clock. So, you know, we got a lot of spur action in there before the football yeah. started. Mm-hmm. And Keldon Johnson is the man. He had 30 for the Spurs, Spurs last night. Have you been watching Jeremy Sohan? Have you been paying any, any, any attention to him? Absolutely. It's hard, hard to miss. Been, he's been yeah. getting better yeah. and better and better. Last night he had 12 and 5. Um, they had a guy, Randall, dude on the, on the Knicks, had 41. But the Spurs were able to overcome the 41 from him. Well, if Jeremy keeps doing the Dennis Rodman thing, he'll be easy yeah. to spot, right? Yes. Yeah. We like that. So, yeah. I don't know why the, I don't know why he has the green hair right now. I, I like mean, it. Why not? But, but uh, yeah, it's cool. Pretty cool. But, I, do you think that the Spurs were competing with the, the Alamo Bowl last night? I mean, you see some empty yeah, seats there. Yeah, probably that's, so. That's tough yeah. when you gotta when you gotta go into the bowl, especially when it's Texas and you know people are just driving out of exactly. Moscow. It was Star Wars night, so I mm-hmm. think it brought them luck. Yep. For the Spurs, yeah, oh, the force was with them. So uh, they get the like. What were we talking about yesterday? Maybe they got the pregame speech from Yoda. From Yoda, yes. yeah. <laughs> Baby Yoda did it. His when part. you will. <laughs> when you will. <laughs> All right, Steph. Here's the positive. They win 122 uh-huh. to 115. Yes. But here's the positive. They have won two other the last three. Okay. That is how, good. How about that? How about that? I am excited. Good percentage. Remember that 11 game losing streak? They haven't had anything like that since. Right. Yeah. So let, been, we won't talk wins, about that. Wins and losses. Yeah. So. We Are we worried about Luca and uh, the? Maps coming to town. Well, yeah. Didn't Dude dropped 60 the other day. Yeah. He yeah. had a triple double, 60 points, yeah. and then double in, in rebounds and assists. So. He's, he's, he's MVP. He's, he's yeah. great in the paint, just like yeah. Justin Horn. I mean, <laughs> oof. I tell you. Wow. So <laughs> tomorrow it's the Mer- the, and we and we still don't like the Mavericks. We've never really liked the Mavericks. No. But, uh, uh, hopefully Cuban won't won't show up. Uh, yeah. We'd love to hate the Lakers more. <laughs> Do we? Yeah. Well, what do we hate more, the Lakers or the? Or depends the, on the season. For another time, guys. Right. I've been, I've enjoyed this chat. It's yeah. Been Happy nice. New Year. Story time. Happy New Year. Story <laughs> time with David. <laughs> right now, 939, 62 degrees. You're watching GMS Nine. <laughs> oh wait. Oh. We'll be back with Thanks, a look Justin. at weather. <laughs> Don't do this at home. We are professionals, but we will stand for this part of the newscast. Yeah. You're welcome. We got this. Yeah, we do. Yeah. <laughs> My knees appreciate it. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, well, it's now time for story time with the weather, and mm-hmm. uh, it, it's a good story. It, it ends well. We've got a great-looking weekend coming up, and the uh, temperatures are going to cooperate very nicely. It's a little cool this morning, but not bad. We're in the low 60s right now. We're noticing there are some light light returns on the radar and I would tell you a lot of this probably is not even reaching the ground. It's that situation where we have high level moisture falls through some drier air and it tends to evaporate before it gets here. It's not to say we couldn't see some sprinkles or a light shower today, but I think anything we see is going to be very, very light and not really much to worry about. The bigger issue will be just the cloud cover and it's around uh, most of today. We'll call it mostly cloudy. 68 noontime, 71, your high temperature this afternoon with that 20% chance of a sprinkle or or light shower. Now by tonight, these clouds clear out and uh, we'll get into some sun starting tomorrow and on Sunday too before humidity increases and we get the clouds right back in here by Sunday afternoon. Live cam shows we got cloudy skies over the airport. Those high clouds made for a nice sunrise as we showed you earlier. 60 at Stetson, it is at 59. Kelly, 61, Randolph. And we're still in the 40s in Fredericksburg and Junction, 49 there, 48. Injunction 54 Rock Springs, 60 Gonzales, 60 down in Bevo, around Bear County. We're right around the 60 degree mark. Obviously, with the clouds, it's going to be hard to warm up much, but I, I do think we'll at least gain about 10 degrees or so by the afternoon. What about the dew point? Well, it's uh, it's rather dry. Yesterday was humid. We uh, had some drier air move in, so now it's dry today and tomorrow. Sunday, moisture increases. That'll allow for more clouds, and then on Monday, a storm system moves in. And with that moisture in place, we should see a shower storm. Not great chances, but opportunity there. And then the moisture 
and humidity levels drop off again. Here's the big picture, and we've got rain stretching from New Orleans up to Memphis, St. Louis, Chicago. This is all just rain, which is pretty impressive considering. Uh, remember, this this is the area that was in the icebox. You had Buffalo that was, uh, well, still digging out of snow, but now they're getting rain on top of the fact that the snow is melting. So then you've got flooding issues up here. This is going to be actually a pretty big issue, I think, up across the Great Lakes. Uh, then out west, you got some snow in the higher elevations and then uh, quite a bit of rain over parts of Northern California and Oregon. This could cause some more uh, minor travel delays today out west. And this looks like we've got a big swath of rain over Texas, but we don't. And again, it's at high level moisture, so it's really not translating to much rain at all. Uh, that area of low pressure that's over us right now moves east. We get some uh, minor ridging over the weekend. That just means we're going to see great weather. It's, it's quiet. Then another storm system tries to move in. Monday, and that's the one that gives us that window for maybe a shower or storm. But the bulk of the activity is going to be to our north. Heavy snow across places like uh, Denver up to uh, Wyoming and Nebraska. And then you get showers and storms out ahead of it. And yes, we could actually see some storms with this. Uh, something to watch, but our window for that is very, very small. And this moves along by Wednesday into Tuesday, or Tuesday into Wednesday and uh, moves away from us. Uh, here's your New Year's Eve forecast. 66 at 8 o'clock. We'll be in the low 60s by 10 o'clock as we ring in the New Year upper 50s. Really, it's, it's fantastic weather. If you plan to go downtown or whatever your plans may be, uh, all looks good. 76 for high on Saturday, 77 Sunday, 79 Monday. That's our warmest day before the front comes in and cools us down some, but this is not a big time front. We're only talking about low 70s by Tuesday and Wednesday. Not bad. Not bad at all. Thank you, Justin. Yep. Uh, 946 Monday on GMS 8 9. We're kicking off the new year with the story of a local teen who opened her own restaurant with the help of her family. The CEO of Sarah's Barbacoa on the northwest side was just 15 years old when she opened the business and Tiffany Huertas got to meet her and her family. We put a lot of care and love into it. Like we want to show that we can use our own like food and voice to spread like love. So tune in on Monday on GMSA at 9 to see this full story and hear Sarah's message to other teens who have big dreams. Okay, 947, 62 degrees. We come back. We are looking back at some of the top viral stories and trends of 2022. Some are pretty crazy and some you just have to see to believe. We'll be right back. Everyone's favorite hippo got her spotlight stolen and a mom had to pay up on social media in a sti social media stifling deal. Plus, a mobile word puzzle gave us all a much needed distraction. These stories and more help recap some of the wildest viral and trending highlights in 2022. Here's CNN's Jeremy Roth. Farewell 2022, we hardly knew ye. Actually, that's not true, because we all witnessed firsthand what a bombastic, fantastic, fashionable, impassionable, self-referential, existential, hedonistic, supercalifragilistic year it was. <sighs> Let's take a look at 2022. The world's most famous pachyderm, Fiona the Hippo, is no stranger to stardom, but she had to learn to share her viral spotlight in 2022 when she became a big sister. Fiona's mother, Bibi, had another baby at the Cincinnati Zoo, a bouncing bulbous boy named Fritz, a name that was crowdsourced from the zoo's vast menagerie of fans. The slick and slippery siblings took some time to bond, as siblings do, and now the pair are thick as thieves. Motherly love was on display in the cutest possible way, caught on camera in a Costa Rican jungle when a baby sloth that had fallen from a tree was reunited with its mother. She may move like molasses, but she was quick to dole out some cuddles. Yeah, it may not be news, but it sure got a lot of views, like over 30 million on Facebook alone. You know, sometimes parents need to use tough love, like a Minnesota mom who went viral for her unique 18 for 18 challenge with her team. Years ago, she offered her son $1,800 cash to stay off social media entirely until he was 18 years old. Well, the kid turned 18 this year, cashed in on his promises kept, and started wading into social media waters $1,800 richer. Totally worth it. I mean, I'd do it again. A pair of family fishing trips became viral whales of a tail. The first when a grandpa-grandson duo hooked a mako shark and the fighting fish suddenly took flight. Next thing we knew, he fell out of the sky and 
landed in the boat. And all of a sudden, here he is, right here in my face, and he hits me with his tail right on my left cheek. I've heard of jumping the shark, but not a shark jumping you. The other fish out of water story makes liberal use of the bleep button, and for good reason. A fishing father and son were scared witless when a whale suddenly crested and went airborne, touching down right on their what boat. The, the pair let fly a hilarious, obscene reaction that's still hanging somewhere over the Atlantic. <laughs> Speaking of what the I don't know what was more mind-boggling in 2022, the treasure trove of interstellar images captured by the newly launched James Webb Space Telescope, or the bevy of bizarre and freaky food stuff we got, but certainly didn't need. Let's compare and contrast them, shall we? Amazing looks at deep space phenomena with cheesy names like the Phantom Galaxy, or cheesy choices like Kraft Mac and Cheese Ice Cream or a Velveeta Martini. Blech. Intoxicating close-ups of nebulas and galaxies light years away, or bonkers boozy byproducts like Oreo flavored wine and a temperature testing fingernail polish for your beer. Breathtaking deep field images of the universe that left you saying, oh my word, or oh my God, what is that? A limited edition Oscar Mayer beauty mask. That's what, it replaced cold cream with cold cuts. But if freaky food fodder was a competition, I believe we have a wiener. Oscar Mayer also debuted a weird frozen hot dog popsicle that even they admitted was either stupid or genius. An out of this world pet project turned into a personal crusade for a Georgia man from Eastern Europe. Star Wars superfan Akaki Lekiachvili spent six years and at least 50 grand building a life-size X-Wing replica, which he used to raise money to benefit war-torn Ukraine. The ship was featured at a Major League Baseball game, and its Twitter account was even liked by Luke Skywalker himself, actor Mark Hamill. Finally, if 2022 was summed up in a word, it would be, well, Wordle. The New York Times took the popular puzzle on mobile, global, where it became a worldwide daily brain-teasing phenomenon. In fact, Google says Wordle was its top searched term for 2022, and if I can just decipher this elusive clue, we will finally bid the year, ah, adieu. I'm Jeremy Roth, reporting. My favorite game. I know. Every day. Every day. Uh, 71 degrees, the forecast high today, just a small chance of a few sprinkles. Then uh, New Year's Eve, 76, 77, New Year's Day, humidity's back. We get a chance for a few showers and maybe a storm on Monday, but rain chances all in all are pretty low, and temperatures look pretty great. Yeah, not too bad. A storm, but not a washout. Hey, don't forget, tonight is the next big mega million strong, the big last one of the year. That's right. The jackpot is up to six. 40, $640 million after there were no winners from Tuesday's drawing, so good luck to everyone playing. Cash value option, by the way, is $328.3 million. And don't forget the key advice, if we have any winners in our area, don't tell anybody, I know it's hard, and yeah. get professional advice. I thought you were going to say- accountants. <laughs> Immediately. I thought you were going to say, share with us. <laughs> I was like, that's good advice, too. My New Year's resolution, uh -huh. share my lottery winnings with everyone next year. Ah, clever. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year.